Hey guys, EVP Man here. Today we're going to take a look at the Huawei Mate 9. Let's check it out. So earlier this afternoon I was walking through the aisles at Best Buy and in one of the uh, corner aisles I noticed that they had displayed the Huawei Mate 9. I said, wow, that's cool that Best Buy is starting to carry this phone. The challenge is that not many people know about this brand and probably would be a little hesitant about buying a phone like this because you've never heard of the name, especially if you're a retailer and someone that is not an avid phone reviewer or someone who's really into technology. So for those of you who have never heard of Huawei, let's talk about why would you consider such a great phone as the Huawei Mate and we'll do the unboxing we'll do a full review and we'll check out some accessories as well. Now Huawei has been making phones for quite some time and if you are in the market for an alternative to Samsung or let's say to the iPhone or Motorola or even LG uh, you've seen on the channel that I've reviewed phones from uh, ZTE and ZTE is also one of those brands that's very much an emerging brand and getting into what I would call the premium line. Uh, fantastic phone and guess what the Huawei falls into that category as well. This is a phone that is high quality as well but it's really not as known as you know Samsung, Motorola or LG. So why would you consider something like this? Well first of all this is an unlocked phone and unlocked means that it's going to work with virtually any GSM carrier so if you are US cellular, if you're a T-Mobile, if you're a simple uh, talk or straight talk, if you are AT&T and you want to be able to free yourself from any kind of contract but also lower the price point of the phone that you're purchasing you may want to look at this phone. Now this phone runs around $599 so it's a little bit more expensive than the ZTE Exxon 7. Um, it's a large larger phone has different technology and um, it, it is getting close to the price of one of the premium phones but this phone does pack a lot. Uh, once again let's do the unboxing we'll look at some of the specs but really if you're looking for an alternative where you can get rid of your contract uh, pay a reasonably low price point for the value that you get with this phone and you're looking for um, technology that is literally going to be in some of the next uh, generation of phones coming from Samsung you may want to consider the Huawei Mate 9. Now since this phone is available on Amazon as well as Best Buy I thought I'd print out the specs that you see on the Best Buy website just so you can get a sense of what you'll get. Now uh, first of all I just wanted to highlight it has as you can see there an octa-core 2.4 gigahertz processor with 4 gig of RAM which is um, very competitive with what you see in the market. And this is the part that I really like about um, a phone like this and what we're starting to see in the market um, emerging when it comes to unlocked phones. It's compatible with literally Cricket, uh, Track Phone, Net 10, um, H2O, Go Phone, Simple Mobile, AT&T, and T-Mobile. You're going to go ahead and get that 4G LTE capability that comes with those phones or those carriers. 5.9 inch um, IPS touchscreen. And you know that's the only area that I would say probably it doesn't really match what you're seeing in the market. It's a uh, it's not as high resolution as what you're seeing with some of the other uh, phones. But I can t I'll tell you uh, from what I saw at the store and what I continue to read on the reviews, the quality is really good. And let's face it, some people uh, can't tell the difference between a very high resolution display and one that is high resolution but not as um, as high as some of the other ones. And we'll talk about uh, specifically what we see in the specs there. But it does have a 12 megapixel uh, dual camera. So a 12 megapixel RGB sensor with a 20 megapixel monochrome sensor. So it's a dual uh, camera lens for shooting in low light conditions. It does have 64 gig of RAM, which is great, or internal memory uh, with that 4 gig of RAM. But uh, one of the things I like also is that it has a micro SD slot for expansion. Now, uh, you can use this as a hotspot, so it should work with T-Mobile and AT&T and the others if you have hotspot capabilities. But what I really like is also, I'll bring this up right here, is that it supports a dual SIM. And with dual SIM, what that allows you to do is you can have two carriers uh, on there. So if you have a need a work phone and then you want a personal phone, you could literally combine your work phone and your personal phone into one phone because you can put your work phone chip into the phone and then put your personal phone chip in the phone and then you can either have them both going at the same time so you can get phone calls from both. Um, you can have the data on one and off on the other. You can um, alternate back and forth. And when we did the review for the Exxon uh, seven we did uh, a review of how dual sim uh, cards are great this is also great if you do travel outside of the u.s. so um, it does have an fm radio it does have an ir blaster does fingerprint technology so it does support um, android pay and it has um, everything that you would expect in the uh, google 
Play Store. The last thing I wanted to highlight right there is that you have a 4,000 milliamp hour battery and a headphone jack. So that's huge and it again has everything that you would expect in a phone. Now one of the things I have to say about just phone manufacturers, I, I am gaining an appreciation for packaging. Um, I do like the way that this um, uh, package or this phone is packaged compared to, let's see if I can reach right here, a Samsung phone. So for example, here is an S7 box, which is pretty plain. Um, I guess it's very functional, but uh, I do like uh, when people take time to really create a nice looking uh, presentation. So here we'll go ahead and open up the box. Uh, you'll see, once again, uh, we have our phone, very reminiscent to some of the phones that you see on the market today, but uh, when it comes to, uh, uh, I think it reminds me a lot of a Note 7, and uh, obviously this has no stylus, so we'll put this over to the side. We'll see what else we have in here. Pop this open. Uh, so here we have our SIM removal tool. We'll open this up. Look at here. You do have a case which is included so you have a nice case included um, a shell uh, you do have it looks like instructional information here and there's nothing else on this side we'll go on this side and see what we have here we have a power adapter All right and this looks like it does also support fast charging technology which is important to note so I missed that on the specs and then let's open up the bottom part right here and it looks like we have um, it, yep, we have a USB-C charging cable, and I want to say that this is headphones, and we have some um, basic headphones. Uh, doesn't look like um, there's anything else in there. So uh, just to summarize, you have your USB-C cable, power brick, you do have here your headphone jack, you have a uh, back cover, or actually it's a shell case for the phone and then uh, you have your phone. Now taking a look at the phone, I'll tell you in hand it's a substantial phone. Um, it's big but you'll notice that I can't get my fingers from one side to the other. I definitely can't get it to the top because of the size of the screen which I believe is a 5.9 inch screen and it does feel uh, it's made out of metal. Uh, it has a non-removable battery it looks like. Yeah, So the battery is non-removable uh, but it feels substantial, feels like a heavy phone, but it's not heavy to the point where it feels like it's too heavy. Um, it does have kind of like a little screen protector on that I'll leave on because I'm just like that and I'm sure a lot of you are like that too. So, um, and on the back here you can see that you have your uh, fingerprint sensor, there's your uh, dual lens camera, flash, uh, let's see what else you have there, um, you have some additional sensors there. And I like the way it labels things out too. See if we can get make sure that that comes out. So you know, it's giving you kind of with the plastic sheeting a little overview of all the controls that are there and where things are. Um, NFC capabilities. Yep. Uh, has your headphone jack. It has an IR blaster there for remote control, and then it has speakers um, as well on the bottom. So all in all really nice substantial phone and you can see the build quality it almost looks like from the back it almost looks like an LG uh, V20 very nice let's go ahead and start it up all right we'll go ahead and start it up press and hold the power button all right we got some feedback and there you see the screen coming up everything looks good uh, graphics seem uh, very bright you can see the colors there look uh, nice and vibrant as well. You see powered by Android as well. Now this phone uh, will have the latest version of Android, Android 7. Uh, the other thing is it does have a somewhat of a proprietary um, UI. Okay, it has a decent startup too. It has a little ring to it and kind of uh, welcome to Huawei. And we'll let it uh, continue to go through its process. Uh, so it does have the latest version of Android, and but it does have um, kind of its own flavor of UI. What I've seen at this point, even at what I saw at the store, it's not a very dominating UI. It's not something that you're going to immediately shy away from or not understand if you're coming from another phone. Uh, so um, you should be fine with it. We're going to go ahead and hit next. Um, it's inviting us to insert our SIM card. So what I'm going to do is, you know what, I'm going to go ahead and do that as part of the setup process. I'm going to insert a SIM card for the for T-Mobile and we'll see what happens.
Now I went ahead and popped open the SIM tray and I just want to show you something about the SIM tray. Uh, now this is a dual SIM SIM tray and it's not just dual in the sense that it's going to support two uh, different carriers at the same time but it could be used for different reasons or different purposes. What you could do here is you can place your sell your SIM here and you can put a micro SD here. So if you're not going to be using two SIM cards, uh, what you can do is have an expanded memory, 128 gig uh, card here, and then this is where you'd put your your cell your card. If you're going to have two cell uh, cards, you'll notice how there's a little shape right here which matches this one. You just place one here and one here uh, when you insert it back in. So once you put your SIM card in place, this is going to look like, once again, this I'm just using one SIM card for this illustration or this example. So now we're going to go ahead and uh, go through the next step of the setup process. So the SIM card um, is inserted. Make sure that that's uh, nicely tucked away. And what we'll do is we'll go on to the next step. Now since I just inserted the SIM card, I just pressed the back button once and it came to a different screen. So I'm going to agree to the terms and conditions. I'm going to choose agree. Um, I'm going to agree to weather service information, um, enhance internet experience, uh, Wi-Fi plus service. So I'll go ahead and agree to everything. And now the next thing is to input my Wi-Fi. Now that I've inputted uh, my Wi-Fi and successfully connected, the next step is to enter my Google credentials. Now this is pretty much standard uh, Google stuff, you know, just um, opting into all these services. I go ahead and opt into everything, so I'll just hit next. Um, and then we'll let it go through the setup process. Um, all right, so here I can set up my lock screen and also my fingerprint sensor, I'm sure, is coming next. So let me go ahead and set that up. Now, as part of any Google setup, you get the option to set up as a new device or you can um, keep um, the app date and restore from another device. So you could choose either one that you want, and I'll just bring in those uh, features over in those settings. Now I chose to restore uh, some of the apps that I have in some of my other phones uh, that I use for testing. So it's going to go through the process of restoring those and set everything up for me. So uh, we'll continue to do the setup process and once we reach the actual screen itself, we'll come back to the recording so we can show you what it looks like. Now from a fingerprint perspective, there's a couple things you can do with the fingerprint sensor. Uh, one of the things you can do is answer the phone, take a photo, video, stop an alarm, and also show the notification panel. Now the next step of the process is to enroll our fingers into the fingerprint sensor. Now one of the things I like doing is, uh, before pressing it, since I never really hold the phone the same way every single time, I like uh, using or rotating the phone in different angles like this and even flipping it upside down when I do my registration. That's going to make sure that I have the best fingerprint sensor and the best fingerprint uh, recognition. Uh, some folks I talk to say that the finger, they don't really like fingerprint sensors because it doesn't work really well, but what I found is if you rotate it and even flip it around sideways, upside down, and you take an impression every way possible, and you do it from multiple fingers, uh, you know, it's going to work out much better for you. Now once you're done inputting your finger, you can go ahead and, and enroll it, um, give it a name. I just called it index, and I'll put an R to indicate that it's my right index finger. All right, so this is what the phone looks like on, on initial boot. If we swipe to the right, you'll notice that you have... Um, some things that I've uh, already started installing that are coming from my backup, so you see it there. Uh, you do have an app drawer, uh, so um, you can rotate things or swipe things up and down. And things are listed here. There's kind of like a little alphabetical uh, index here that's showing you um, if you want to go straight to um, apps that have a specific letter, uh, that begin with a specific letter. So you can see when I go to the V, how it jumps to all the Vs. That's a nice little touch to get some to something really quick, especially if you're trying to find something. You also have the ability to search for things at the very top there. But that is the unboxing um, quick setup. And as you can see up there, it already recognizes that I'm on T-Mobile um, and it looks like things are good. So the next thing we're going to do over the next couple of days is we're going to do tips and tricks. We're going to go over the full UI. I'll show you some of the features and personalization. But that was the unboxing of the Huawei Mate 9. And again, if you're looking for a phone, not wanting to be on a contract, but looking for an alternative uh, to what you currently have, uh, check out the Huawei Mate. It's a nice quality phone, great battery life at 4,000 milliamp hours dual SIM capable as we talked about and it's you know just an opportunity for you to try something new. So this concludes my unboxing and initial setup of the Huawei Mate 9. If you have any comments or questions leave it in the comment area below. Uh, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and if there's something over here that you're interested in why don't you check it out. Thanks for watching.